Hello, everybody, and welcome to another PMP end-of-month review. So, what are we doing here? Well, uh, the Painters Motivating Painters community on Facebook, uh, which is a hobby community focused on helping you take your next step uh, on your hobby journey. Uh, every month, we have an event wherein you can post uh, a picture or pictures of a single miniature you've painted during that month, and uh, you can... Uh, put that up for review. So what we're going to do is spend about the next hour, and I'm going to go over uh, sort of doing the, these reviews. I'm going to go over all the miniatures people submitted. We're going to talk through them, try to help people out. As usual, uh, we do have to limit people to one submission into this a month. If you want to submit, it's very easy. I'll show you how when, we, when we're over on the screen here in just a second. And um, uh, try the more detailed feedback you ask for, the more I can actually help in trying to help you take your next step on your hobby journey. Uh, if you'd like to become a member of the PMP and join this community of enthusiastic, positive hobbyists, uh, we work very hard to maintain that as our community standard. Uh, the link will be down in the description. Anywhere you are from beginner to master level, we would love to have you. We welcome everybody because we've all got our own next steps to take. So uh, with that out of the way, Let's go ahead and jump into it. So over here on my screen, you'll notice I've got this up. Uh, if we basically, when you come in here to the events uh, tab, oh, sorry, let's go back. Here we go. Uh, sorry, I was already in the, the thing. So if we come here to the painters, motivating painters, here we are on the homepage. You'll notice the October event has already been posted when I'm doing this. I'm a little late. I apologize. I was traveling abroad at the beginning of the month. But if you come here to events, you will see all the previous months. And if we go with our September submissions, there you go. And then you can just make a new post and you're good to go. So just drop that in with your pictures. Uh, as it is, let's go down to the beginning. Uh, quick note on what I will say as always. Uh, there is a video I will link down in the description that goes into detail on a lot of the things I talk about. If I say you need more tonal variation or more contrast or, or this or that, I talk about that in detail in the video linked down below so you can go watch that for reference. Uh, I would love to spend you know, lots of time on everybody's post. I really would. But uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of people who submit these and I do have to somehow get back to normal life. Uh, and so I don't have five or six hours to do this. So I will try to limit my feedback and I will sometimes use those shortcuts, which are referenced in the videos. Uh, but with that being said, let's jump right into it. So first off, Stephen uh, Smiley with his first ever submission said he was always a bit intimidated. Don't, and, and that's, nobody should be intimidated. I, I will always try to tailor my feedback to both, you know, where you are on your journey, as well as what you directly ask me for. I'm, I'm not here to beat anybody up. This is, this is all just to help you take your next step. You're not being judged against some objective standard or anything like that of, of, you know, the highest of level painting. It's about it's about helping you progress on your journey. Okay, so uh, he says this is mostly GW contrast paints, overbrushing and dry brushing for highlights and contrast and a little edge highlighting. Okay, so let's take a look. King of Ruin here. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's suitably gross, that's for sure. Uh, I mean, obviously, this is we're in Nurgle, so great. <laughs> right off the bat, there's a couple really, really horrendous Nurgle submissions this month, so that'll be fun for me. Um, all right, so a couple quick tips. I'm just going to cycle through the pictures here while I talk. Um, with the metals and stuff like that, I think those would be good if they looked a little more rusted, meaning like let's work in a little more different types of rust and coloration there. Uh, if you don't want to go directly to have oranges, you can use red rusts and, and uh, pink rusts and yellow rusts and stuff like that that will align more with your color scheme, but more tonal variation on that in general I think would be good. Uh, with the bone shards protruding out of here, I would love to see the same level of detail as you've got up here on these. I like the striations. Those are good. I'd still like to see them transition to a little more uh, variation toward a brighter white out here at the top. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's good. You got all the little boils and pustules and things like that are well picked out. They look suitably gross. The yellow is a nice uh, cutout. 
I would spend a little more time bringing more highlights into the face. The face gets lost against all this yellow and red and the bright wounds and pus and stuff down here. So you want you want to make sure you're you're clean around here, and you want to make sure you brighten this up. So, you know, add some ice yellow or some any kind of yellow more into your uh, into your paint to bring up the highlights here. Push me a little deeper shadows. Increasing the overall brightness and tonal variation on the face will draw my attention to the right place, and that's always where we want to be focused and looking at the miniature. Okay. Uh, only other note I have is always black rim your base. Your bases can be any color, but they should always around the edge as long as it's black. Uh, and by black, I mean black gray or dark gray or some near black type of thing. Uh, like this kind of overpainting where a wash is, it's just, it's the simplest last step. Don't skip it. I'll notice it every time and it will always look bad. Anybody can paint a black rim on the base. Always paint your rim. Okay. But yeah, cool stuff. Hope to see more. Uh, all right, uh, Seng, I've been who's uh, says it's his tenth month in the hobby and it's his latest painted model. Well, my friend, you're you're doing some great work here. Uh, this is certainly a really fun uh, space marine. I love this guy's pose because it's so nice and open. He's a great guy to paint. Uh, I don't remember what chapter this is. I've seen you share a couple of these online. Um, they look really good. The sword is nice. Uh, I think you're. You know, you could you could smooth some of that transition there. Actually, where I would challenge you on the sword is if you're going to do something so big and bright and blue, you could actually break this up a little bit. It wouldn't draw as much attention if it wasn't so heavily saturated. So having multiple reflection points on the power sword, so like one here and then one here and one here and then one here, so they kind of alternate, uh, is a good way to go. So like here, you've just got an alternating one to one pattern. Changing that to a two to two or a three to two would probably help uh, bring that down some. Because right now it's pretty much the most eye gow like eye grabbing part of the the miniature. Uh, the only other note I would have is two simple things. Uh, saying so, first off, your your gray white here is is really smooth and really nice. I'd love to see just a little bit soft, subtle shading in here some more, especially under the legs, under the arms, under this thing here. Just taking that a little step farther, I think, would be really nice because it would just add that contrast that would really pop out the white. You could also push up into a pure white just in a few places, edges here, center of the face line, top of this. It looks like you're still a little off your full white. Um, so just really being like those, those final touches of pushing the contrast, I think, would really help. The other note I have is very small, but this guy's walking around on what you've told me is some kind of dirty, dusty, arid landscape. You told me that because you made it this dry brown crackle stuff that looks like this, that looks like dirt, and then you had dead dry plants, and yet his feet are pristine like he just stepped off the drop pod. A little bit of pigment dust on the feet can go a long way to making your your uh, marine looks like he actually is operating in the theater that you've you've sort of set him in there. So there you go. Good stuff. Okay, uh, Benjamin uh, says, uh, this is his first time participating in the review. Well, welcome. Uh, basically, he wants to know, uh, you know, what looks good and what needs more work in the future. Sure. Okay. So, uh, what looks good? Uh, the In general, your composition, color placement is all good. Um, things look, you know, pretty nice and clean. Uh, so, I think all that's nice. Your gem looks real good. I think, you know, the gems in general, there are many gems. I think they all look fine. I think the extra touches to the purple are good. Uh, the I'm a little suspect on this stuff here. I don't know if that's texture or what's going on here with this like gray part. So I just can't, like I'm leaning way in and I can't tell. Like, were you going for a stippling effect there? You'll have to tell me in the comments if what exactly you were aiming at on that one. That, that confuses me a little. Um... The other small tip I'll give you, I, I love the blue, red, and purple. I think that looks really nice. Uh, I do like that you desaturated the red and made it rather dark. That's a great choice. It would have been it would have been absolutely way too eye-catching otherwise. As it is now, it's a very nice compliment. So excellent, excellent pick there. Be careful with this sort of airbrush OSL. Um, it just looks overblown like it looks like you hit it, this area with turquoise with your airbrush. And what you want to get here is something where there's a defined area of glow. Like an area is bright, and then there's dark, very dark in the shadows, and then there's a very thin glaze that colors out the rest. 
So just be careful with that kind of stuff. And then finally, where I would tell you is uh, the tonal variation on your skin could be a little farther. So think about like how you'd work additional color tones into the skin, reds, purples, brighter highlights coming up into yellows and whites, things like that. Uh, in general, you want to see skin as a fun chance, even when it's a small face to do to add in a lot of different colors. One quick final note, uh, don't do this, this thing you did here. Like, I assume he's supposed to be some kind of sniper character from, like, his very long rifle. Like, I, I don't know what he's from or what game he's from. But, like, this little bush that's supposed to be, one, it doesn't look like it's actually going to hide him. So then it ends up looking cartoony. Like, he's going like to hide behind this bush like it's a Looney Tunes cartoon. Uh, and two, you're just blocking off your model. Like, you can see when we look at several angles here, this is just blocking part of the model off. You generally want to keep ground cover like this to be extremely minimal and near the ground so it's not actually covering part of what your model can see. If you want to bring the concept of someone hiding behind something, then put it over here to the side and, and generally just kind of do it on a larger base. It's not as bad or obtrusive and also don't make it a little stick bush. This looks like a miniature tree. Um, you know, make it like a bush, like a significant sized bush, but put it to the side of him, like way to the side of him. Uh, so that way I can still see the miniature front on, but I can still get the narrative of what's happening in that tiny diorama. Okay. All right. But very good stuff, man. Hope to see more. All right. So Reinhardt, uh, we've been working for a while here, month to month. He's been sending some awesome looking stuff. And this month he brings us the, uh, the man himself, Constantin Valdor, uh, from the Custodes. He's been working on a Custodes for us. And basically, he says, you know, I, I put about 20 hours into this. If I put another 20 in to push it further, where can he go? Uh, sure. Okay, so I'm just going to I'm gonna cycle through while, I'm, while I talk about kind of some things that I notice. Um, on the cloak, I think the cloak is probably fine. It could come up more. It could have texture. Like, if I was going to take another 20 hours, the cloak would be a major area of focus for me. And what I would do is look at brightening it up even more in places. I would look at adding uh, texture to make it look like it is some kind of cloak, like satin or something. So I would be coming in with lots of thin hashes like this and then glazing them down and then hashes and then glazing them down and hashes and then glazing them down and stuff like that. Uh, so that's kind of a thought. Um, the This blue that's right here doesn't do anything. Like it's it's very bright. It's very blue. And I understand this is with and without the back on the base. Um, but this blue is like so bright and isn't moving in the right ways as you would communicate on the rest of the figure. Like that is to say, you've got this big matte chunk of this blue. I would like to see this painted more like hair. So actually catching highlights and having light, light lines and light rings on it. You know, that kind of thing. I would focus some attention there. Turning to the front of the miniature. Uh, yeah, let's look at him straight on. Um, what I would say is... I think we could still, I think we'd still probably go a little farther on the gold, especially against some of the details. Like, you know, we're, we're, we've been on this journey of pushing the shading up into the, the gold. And I think you're getting there. I think we could still go farther. Where I really notice it is like where it's the most sort of obvious to me is up here, like in this space on the, on his, uh, power halberd thingy. Um, it just like, I hope I'm not covering anything with my screen. No, okay. We're all right. Um, the, uh, I just realized where my, my face is in all this, and I, was, I need to make sure I'm not covering anything. Um, the, I'd love to see more shadows drawn up here and here and, like, more edges picked out. Just generally defining it. It's very bright, which is awesome. You're getting a nice high reflective gold, but I want to see more control over the light. Like, more shadows pushed especially up here is where i noticed the most here it's not as bad his legs look good um probably a little more on like the feet and in this area drawing shadows up to one side to direct suggest directionality of lighting yeah so that's probably where i'd focus my time those elements but overall it's uh it's really cool i mean heck of a heck of a cool piece that's for sure and i like the colors you're sort of reflecting there there through the the metal all right, Benjamin brings us a big Mordheim building. Hey, excellent. Always down with that. He says that he wasn't happy with the wood. So let's talk about wood. Um, yeah, when you've got wood like this, I mean, you've got so much of it. The idea of, probably the idea of um, 
you know, going in and painting individual striations is, is mind numbingly insane. So my advice is lots more when you're on sort of the wood phase, lots more careful dry brushing and then the application of washes of different colors and types. Go through different brown tones, use different dry brushes, use ivory, use gray, um, work some purples into the wood, work some greens into the wood, stuff like that will create a lot more interest and variation. And then you can also come in and just stipple the wood, like literally take a big, you know, like a big stippling brush, right? Something like this. There you go. And just start like popping the wood like that with extremely little paint on your brush and it'll start leaving little dots. If you go out and look at trees and stuff like that, that's what you'll see. They have all these little imperfections and stipples and, and like little points of different black and white in them. Uh, so stuff like that can be really great. You can also add in some texture. So here's a fun thing you can do. You can get out some pigment or something like some typhus corrosion or something like that. Mix it with some green ink, okay? And then just start stippling it on around like corners and edges and it will look like moss. It's another good way. It's a, it's a nice simple trick to, uh, to get that micro texture that moss would have. Uh, so there you go. But overall, really cool, cool building. All right, Zab uh, started working on his Legion of Gosh band for Warcry, starting with his Seneschal, uh, trying to look work on his OSL and his OSL weathering and old fabric. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, so on the OSL portion of it, uh, we'll just kind of I like this. He gave me all three angles in one picture. Zang. All right, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make me smaller. I'm gonna shrink there. Um, there we go. Now I won't be in the way of anything, hopefully. All right, so let's talk about the OSL. I think that's your 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 success here, uh, by far. Like, it, it looks good. Uh, you could pop, what, what we really need is just to pop some of the sources a little brighter. So here at the base of his skull that's flaming, I would like to see a little more yellow. Same with maybe the heart of wherever the heat is on this axe. You know, just stuff like that a little more brightness to the center, to the hottest part. Right now, the whole flame is rather consistently lit, and I want to. you want to see the source of that, that bright, that light in an OSL, right? But as far as the reflections and stuff go, I feel like you're, you're pretty good. You're, you're capturing it. It seems to be, you know, hitting at most of the places I would expect it to hit. Um, you could probably draw a little bit more out here to this area of the shoulder, like light would come down here. Right? It would be very soft, so it's just some subtle glazes of light in there. You also want to think about um, materials with OSL a lot. It's one of the biggest challenges of it. So, like, this is very matte black. It would have this subtle green tinge to it a little bit. But this is steel, theoretically, right? So it would be highly reflective and be, like, just grabbing and catching any light in the area. So this would actually probably reflect green here and here. Right, because light is gonna light is traveling around here in this area. It's not just like it's a lot of people think with OSL like you need to just draw a bunch of straight lines. And that's true, that's a good first thought. But remember, light's gonna bounce off of things too. So like this is reflecting off of his axe and coming back and hitting here and the, the environment around him and stuff like that. Weakly, but just having that very light glaze of it there could could help. As far as the weathering goes, I don't see a lot of actual like weathering or rust or stuff, so I would say that you're fine. I think things look suitably old, which I assume is what you mean. So yeah, I think that's okay. If you wanted to push the weathering, you could do things like take the steel in the places that are just metal and, you know, add in some, some rust and brown and orange and stuff. Uh, as far as the texture on this goes, uh, it's good. Like you've got a lot of hashes in there. I need more. Um, right now it's still a little rough and it's too short. Like, that is to say, here in these internal areas, I don't have anything. It's so starkly uh, broken. What I would love to see is basically you do this. Uh, this is an insane thing to say, what I'm about to say. I know. But I'd love to see you do all this twice. So draw your lines out over almost the whole thing. Like, avoid only the deepest, deepest parts. Then glaze it all purple. And then do it again about this short. So I had a weak texture here and a stronger texture here. And it would sell a lot better. So, there you go. Hope that helps, Ab. Okay. All right, Leonard, uh, newest addition to the, his D&D &D party, Victor the Bloody. Uh, not yet finished, but close. He'd like some CNC and any help regarding the flame on top of his crossbow. Okay. And you will paint the ring around the base black. Good. 
All right, so here, my friend, is where we need to have a conversation about lighting in photos. So I this I can't do anything with, and this I can't do much with. Set your picture, set your miniature down. Don't hold it in your hand. Set it down somewhere. Get a piece of A4 paper or something like that, or open a book that has black and white kind of gray stuff on the front page of the book. Go to GW's website. They have a pinned thing on the side of the community thing about taking pictures of miniatures, but just put it up. Indirect lighting. You don't want a bulb directly on it. You want light diffuse in the area. Take your phone. Get a nice frame shot. There you go. Even lighting. Like, this is too cold and direct. This is too yellow and direct. Like, notice this shadow. That tells me we're way too strong. If I can see a shadow in the picture, we have too much direct lighting. So it's very, very hard for me to give you feedback. I'm not trying to beat you up over this. I just, like, to do this, I need good photos because I'm not in the room with you. That being said, I will give you my best shot. Um, so on the, on the flame, more yellow, more orange. That is to say you have too much white and it doesn't have enough of the fire colors in it. It's more toasted marshmallow right now. This should be, if you want to have any white, it should be the thinnest line of white. And then even then it should be like ice yellow instead of pure white. Then going up into a very, very slow, small band of yellow and then mostly orange. And then, and like by orange, I mean sort of a, a, a deep yellow orange. And then you can come out here into a little bit of red black at the tip for some carbonation or smoke. Um, as far as the red goes, that's the biggest area where I would challenge you to improve. Like you washed this and then that's where we stopped. And I can tell that because I can see the coffee staining off of the wash. And we don't want that. So there's not much reason to wash uh, a shape like that anyways. It's got a lot of flats and not texture. So in general, you want to avoid washing stuff like that. You want to paint in shadows or something. But here, I mean, you want to take your red and smooth this all out and create highlights. So that would be my, my best advice for you there. That will help you a lot if you kind of go that direction of like, just don't end on the wash. Never end on a wash. If you use them, super fine. They're a great technique. It's just afterward you need to go back in and put those layers over top, especially when you've got large flats, because otherwise you get coffee staining like this. So that would be my feedback for you, Leonard. All right. Next up, uh, Andrew bringing us a beautiful piece. This is a little experimental piece he's doing. Uh, trying to work with both watercolors for his background, using like simple and interesting shapes, and going for the more like uh, cartoony sort of borderland style. So heavy black lines, strong, hard divisions, you know, something we normally don't do with miniature painting where we're obsessed with like ultra smooth blends and transitions. Andrew is bucking the trend and giving us a real piece of art here. Uh, and I want to just, this is the background, it's absolutely gorgeous, I love it. But I really want to give you, there you go, this one, this whole shot. Because keep in mind, that is an actual miniature standing in front of that painted background that's not painted on. But he's done such a great job of that painterly element being captured. Um, there's a shot you have in here, Andrew, that I really do like. Where you see just how over the top he is with the green on that side. There it is. Right? And, like, when you look at it like that, it looks so almost insane uh, to see those extreme strong colors. But when we flip back to like one of these straight on shots, it just reads so perfectly, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, Andrew, my feedback is I think I would push some of the stark highlights on the other side up a little farther. Not quite as much as the lightsaber, as clearly if it was that bright on the other side, it wouldn't be, the lightsaber wouldn't be having that effect. But like here on her, like these, these are reading as some kind of satin or reflective material to me from how you've painted them so just like similarly having a bit of a, a light going in the opposite direction here where this is like you've you've low side angled this one top side angling lights here with a starker line like a white here a white here a white here and a thin white here and then here and on the boot and on the there and da -da. You, you see what i'm saying like basically going oh look at that hey knows it's a face uh going one more level higher i think on that side would really capture it but i really love this andrew i mean this is just so freaking creative and she looks wonderful the the tones on the face are so magnificently captured um yeah it's great stuff okay liam uh following on from last month's submission uh another n imperial knight oh you know i'm in love with this 
So, ba-boom! Look at this big boy. Oh, yeah. Uh, now we're in my wheelhouse. All right. So we've got big nights. Um, yeah. All right. Some general feedback. Weathering and OSL. Um, the OSL looks fine. The airbrush is, like, less obtrusive on something of this side. Yeah, I mentioned earlier about that. But, like, something of this size, I think it's it's okay. You do want to be careful when you do that. Um, it can still help to, like, then still glaze back with the other color a little bit. Like, here on the green and stuff. Just kind of where it, uh, where, where it pops out at me. Maybe taking in a little bit of uh, blue with a brush, like a mid-tone blue. These look a little overblown. So, like, bringing some, some mid-blue back in there. So, you just got a smaller area of white heat, I think, would be helpful. Um, the I think as far as the, like, the color scheme and all that looks great. Let's get in with one of those close shots. There you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think as far as the damage goes, it's good. I would favor these on the green to have a little more dark on them than kind of the gray or steel you're going for where it's chipped away. Like, I think it looks right here on the white. I would do the same thing here. Like, have this these chips be the same dark color. I don't think there's any reason to have these be the lighter steel scratch and this not be like that. Um... So I think darker chips in the green would, would sell me a little better uh, than the sort of white chips. You could have some of the white chips too, or the light chips, whatever you want to say. But but I think I would favor the darker ones. It'll stand out actually a little better. Um, I like your scratches up. Let's go back to the headshot because that'll be a nice one. Oh, I guess we don't have it. That's close to get. I like the weathering around here with the worn edges. That's good. I, sorry, I thought there was one that was more zoomed in on the face. Um, so I think that's good. I think you could use with a little bit more, uh, like I like some of the smaller streaks. I'd love to see some of that in the green. I didn't see much of the streaking over there. Maybe I just missed it. So if I did, I'm sorry. I guess there's one there. Yeah, okay. Never mind. You got a few. Yeah, I, I'd like to see a little more of that, I think. Um, maybe like a couple nice long ones. Your streaks are very similarly sized. So maybe break that up a little. Have a couple that are a little longer, you know, to really like, somewhere where water would really gather and roll out. But but all in all, I mean, this is really, really nice work on this guy. This is such... I, I love this miniature, this this particular, um, you know, these big knights, the Dominus class ones. Um, as for, By the way, the basing looks good. Pigment on the feet looks great. He looks dusty, like he's walking in there. Um, spruce this part up a little more where it's not just like... Because this looks like just the base. So still a little more mud or dirt or grit or sand or something just to kind of build that up a little more and give me a little more variation in there. But overall, I think it's really solid. Um, one small note on the plasma glow, not the, the glow itself is fine, but I would make this line here a little hotter. This is about the same intensity as your light spots. And this should be hotter than this. This is just a light, theoretically. This is hot plasma. So like you want to sell that and boost that up. So there you go. Overall, though, Liam, super great, man. I dig it. All right, Thomas Spite, uh, looking for feedback on the skin tones. Uh, first time using Scale 75, and he likes them. Also, if possible, uh, attempted some... Basically, he was using Vallejo metals. First of all, are you using Vallejo metal color? What Vallejo metal paint are you using? Because he says he still sees granular stuff. Like, Vallejo has, you know, many different types of metal paints. Vallejo metal color, that specific thing. Not model, not game. Not uh, not air, not anything. Metal color is the one. He says he still sees, uh, you know, sort of granulated stuff. Could it be because of the rattle can primer? Yes. Yes, that is what it's from. Rattle can primers don't prime evenly. That's what they do. They make texture, and that's why they're annoying. Uh, and why I don't rattle can. Uh, there's not much you can do with that, by the way. It's just, like, get an airbrush is the right answer, unfortunately. Now, as far as the uh, skin goes, I think it looks really nice. You've got some good tonal variation there. You're using the low tones of the that skin set really well. Um, my advice would be to grab something that isn't in that skin set, uh, something like a, a high chic yellow or an ice yellow, and have a little bit of that mixed into your highlights. That can actually warm it up really nice. Um, you could also, you know, there's like basically some kind of yellow tone like that. There's a, there's a couple different yellows you can use. Um, but a desaturated yellow could be a good way to go uh, to help pop that up even more as far as really getting out the highlights. You could also keep pushing the shadows, like keep using that African and Indian shadow 
to to really delineate those muscles and stuff like that. But you're on a good, very good road here. Like I think it looks good. Just keep pushing that contrast more with those tones. Now, as far as the uh, shading on the metals go, good. I think you need to go farther is the short answer. Like here on the top, what I want to see is it really be directional. So like this being, you know, like a silver spot, then I should see something very dark sepia uh, slash purple down here on this and then so on and, you know, anti-reflections and things like that, I think is where you want to be. Um, these little punch daggers they have don't highlight well, so I understand that. Um, but yeah, just more of like, especially with the steel, you know, again, take this one to pure silver, then have this go almost to black, stuff like that. There's a couple blades you've probably seen me do recently if, if you follow my stuff where, where this is what I do. And the key is just even with that TMM, you've got to push it super, super high on the contrast. Um, you know, like you, you, you go up the same amount with those inks or those paints running from black to pure silver is your white, right? It's just like with NMM, you want to run that whole gamut. But overall, very good. I dig them. Cool bases too. It's a neat take on the sort of, they look very much like they belong, That like those bases are neat takes on the um, uh, silver tower. There you go. Sorry, it took a minute. I was like searching through the box names. Uh, Alex Shine, uh, looking for criticism specific of the helmet and the mushrooms in the back of the armor. Wants to keep the model overall bright. Sure. Uh, well, guess what? On the helmet, the key here is our old friend, tonal variation. Uh, I don't have a back mushroom. Oh, I guess just look at these. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I, there's no back back shot. Uh, on the metals, see my previous statements I just made. So, like, especially his big hook thing. Uh, on the mushrooms, same thing. My Here's my best advice. Go Google mushrooms. Just, like, for stuff like this that's just a natural thing in the world, like these mushrooms... Like, I understand these are fantastical, you know, fairy tale versions of these things. But just go Google real mushrooms. You will be amazed at the color and variation, the way that they speckle and pattern and shift tones and have texture. <coughs> Excuse me. And just do that. Um, like, have, draw out some lined texture, add some additional dots and speckles and stuff like that. Have them color shift slightly, you know, go from, like, green with a purple cap, like, fungus is so fascinating in what it achieves with its its colors and the, sort of what's in it and just bringing out that variation is what you want to go for on on the loon face his armor his, his moon face the mac tonight face um what you should what you want to push there is into more like light rust tones so if you watch my recent video on the imperial fist yellow you'll see what i'm talking about you want to come down to something that looks a bit like that. That's Vallejo Model Air Light Rust. That can be your shadow color there. Even maybe a tiny bit of true rust. And then you want to just bring up those highlights in like here and on his nose and the top of his eye, the armor of his eyes and out here on his big chin piece. So again, just more tonal variation is the right answer. But uh, yeah, cool stuff. I dig him. All right. It's dicey. Hey, what's up, man? He's got a lot of models. This is like so many models, dude. There's so many models. He's got a lot of photos painted through everything. We're just going to cycle through here. Great looking warbands. It's a lot of streams. I know you were you were pushing to get this whole box set painted, so it's very impressive that you got the whole thing done, plus all the monsters, all our death chickens here and the harpies. Very nice. Yeah, super cool. I mean, across the board, I would say, like, things I see is you'd want to you want to increase the tonal variation on stuff in places. But overall, it's a heck of an accomplishment, man. Uh, just to get this whole thing painted is is uh, pretty impressive. So way to go. He streams all the time when he's painting. Uh, you should look him up under Dicey Guy. And it's, it's really fun. He's a great dude. And this is great work, man. All right. So, Scott, uh, Reaper Bones uh, Cave Troll, hanging out in a dim cave, uh, used a new round one, rock and crystals. Okay, sure. Uh, all right, as for the picture, in last month's review, you said to make a more uniform background and not such a dark picture. Uh, hey, look at this. And you know what? You did it. This is so much better. Like, this is so much better. This is great. Okay, so let's give you some feedback here. Uh, so we have the classic Curse of Purples here. 
Uh, purples are very difficult to highlight with because per lighter purples have a bunch of white dumped in them to make them look more light color because whether or not purple is actually a color is a bit questionable as to whether it even exists. But anyway, how they lighten this maybe color is by just dumping white into it. And so what happens is you get these incredibly stark transitions. When this happens, you need to go back to your original color and glaze like your, your mid-tone and glaze some of that in, okay? Like uh, glaze some of this purple over the edge to smooth it out. It's a lengthy process. Purple's a tough color to paint with. Now, as to does he look like he's in a dim cave? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, I think your biggest oppor missed opportunity here, like the skin looks great. You got the overall lighting and coloration right. Uh, I like that all this is drained out, like your red is desaturated, the gray and stuff like that. I, I would like to see maybe a little more in this gray, a little more texture or something just to kind of give it a little more life, but that's a minor thing. It doesn't really need to be. It's, it's, it's fine enough. I think a real opportunity here was with these gems. So if you go back and look at my how to paint warp stone video, you'll see I, I tackle a bunch of gems just like this. And you'll see like the level of contrast I go to in there. And I think ringing him in those really bright blue gems that look like they're like fluorescing in the minimal light would have been a really amazing touch. Uh, my last and final note is stone, especially, especially stone in a cavern is not just slate, flat, dark gray. Okay. I've probably done this on a previous one. Uh, but I'll do it again now. Stone caverns. Okay. There's a good one. See all this green and brown and all this stuff worked in? Like, or here we've got these amazing, like, oh, you can't see it because it's up. Yes, it's stupid. Sorry. I keep forgetting that it does that. No. 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 There we go. So you can see how you've got all these different lustrous colors and stuff in here, different greens. These are all like, you know, sort of Carl's bad caverns and things like that. But even with a lot of these where they're more natural, what you're going to see is like lots of different color tone that get trapped in here. There you go. Kent's caverns. See all this like rusty orange and stuff that gets trapped from iron oxide. Uh, here's some nice stones. Where is this? Blanchard Springs caverns, right? Look at all the greens and yellows and browns and stuff that's here. Where Look where everywhere that water is touching regularly. Look how much green and stuff is worked in there, right? So the point is, is that like in dank underground caves, you're going to have other colors. So more color. But cool stuff. I like it. Uh, this is great. Okay. Dwight, uh, having trouble highlighting magenta and cyan without the colors being desaturated. Tried starting with darker shadows, but it just seems flat to me. How would you recommend I highlight those colors? Also, could you rec recommend a way to improve the contrast in general? Okay, sure. Uh, quick note, be careful with bases like this. Like, I love the mask dancing. You might have wanted to use the slightly shorter pillar. There's a slightly more broken one. In I, I love tall bases. I know this is going to sound hypocritical coming from me. But in general, you don't want the thing that they're standing on to be taller than them. Just a small note. She's fine. She's right at about at the level. You're like, you're pushing the level of sanity here. But just be careful of that. You're right on the line. Uh, yeah, the answer is uh, more deeper colors. Like, I think your blue is, f you know, probably fine. I mean, the answer is you work in a thing that's not white. And then, or here's two options. I'll say it this way. Depends on what you want to go for. Here's option the first. Use a bright white or gray, put in your highlights with just the white or gray, then glaze over with the cyan. And after a couple glazes, what you'll get is a hyper bright, intense cyan. But also taking your colors deeper <coughs> into shadows is correct. Like what we have here is a lack of shadow colors, okay? And what I mean by that is if we took this photo, okay? Uh, so let's copy this image and, uh, let's see, actually, let's just go, yeah, photos. Okay. Stop it. Okay. Nope. It's not gonna let me do it. All right. I was going to try to turn your picture black and white, but I don't have a good way to do that. Turn your picture black and white. <laughs> 
and uh, and you'll see what I mean. In fact, hold on one moment. All right, so as you can see here, I set the photo to black and white. And what you notice is stuff like the skin ha looks flat. Like there's just nothing there because there's no tonal variation. This is the easiest way to test your actual sort of your, your tonal variation across a piece. If you turn it black and white and everything looks basically the same color, then you haven't varied anything, right? Um, as far as like alternating the hue. So what we need here is more depth of shadows and those kinds of things. So to go back to our regular one here, what we see when we compare the difference, like look at the claw. You see how it's mostly the same color? What we need to see is draw down into darker purples. And in fact, in general, purple is going to be your good color here. So like drawing and taking that cyan and adding a little bit of purple to it or something like that and getting that into your shadow color. Same here on the claw, right? Probably the same in the skin. Um, and that's what's going to help you get that kind of that kind of contrast. So there you go, Dwight. Hope that helps. Sorry, I refuse to be defeated by that. A great tip in general, and something I do very commonly when I'm painting, is I'll pause in the middle of what I'm doing, and I'll take a picture of it with my phone and switch it to black and white. Um, so there you go. All right, Evan. Uh, painted a fire spray from X-Wing. Extremely happy with how it came out. I would say so. Looks pretty sweet. Uh, what would push it that extra mile without completely changing styles? Okay, sure. Yeah. It's a vehicle, so I mean, you know, it's it's always tough to say. You've got some nice damage and variation. Like the little, you, you know, your little light there looks cool. Uh, okay. So as far as the reds go, I actually think the other way could help. Like a little bit of modulation into the darker tones could could help you there. I'm not doing another turning of something black and white, but th th that would be the point. Um, the reflection on the carapace looks a little stark like that is to say the transition between here where it's reflecting and here maybe a little bit of a turquoise transition here would be good um the panel lines look nice and strong I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that's catching my eye i wish i had one from the other side but i don't i guess kind of there a little bit yeah the panel lines all look strong um i would say just yeah like darker tones in the reds is probably a good way to go um, I think your rusting and your weathering all looks pretty solid. Maybe a little bit of other, I think the other thing I would say is maybe a little, um, decals or tiny freehand designs, like ships tend to have insignias on them and things like that. Just little call signs, numbers, little hazard symbols, just, they can be very utilitarian. I'm not saying to come in and like start, you know, doing, uh, you know, pictures all over the thing. But just like little symbols and letters and numbers and things, uh, like serial type numbers, kill counts, even like on panels, like here's a here's a fun, simple trick. Let's say you've got a little panel like this one right here. Like, why is this a panel as opposed to one flat piece? Well, I don't know. I, I haven't looked at the like, you know, manual for this thing, but maybe it's because it opens up into a bunch of wires and stuff. And so it's dangerous. So you can put a little hazard symbol there, like a tiny little hazard sticker. The like deco kits from... Night Titans have those kind of things. They can be great on just little stuff like that to just add little peaked spots of visual interest. And those are the kind of things that take the vehicle way up to the next level into that realism level. When you've got just those little tiny details, little serial numbers, little warnings, little things that like the humans who live in this world that work on it, you know, if this is a working ship <coughs> and it was manufactured somewhere, um, there would be those call signs of things that, that people did with it um think about your car like if you have your car it has uh you know little it has like your make and model on the back like you know honda civic and then if it's a version of it right you know the coupe or whatever you know something like that little tiny things like that can um or if you pop the engine you'll see little little stickers and little warnings pieces and places like that just just things like that can be good touches all right, the last bard from Kingdom Death. Where can he improve? Open for all feedback. All right. Okay. So let's see if we can let's see if we can take this up into full screen without. Nope, didn't make it that much bigger. Okay, the pictures are small. Fair enough. Uh, we'll just have to like deal with that, man. Um, 
So my answer is the blue could use a little more variation here and in these parts, I think. The head of this creature looks good. And the skull thing on the back looks good. But the the like the the blue in these upper areas looks a little flat. I think the other option is probably just continuing to push your skin tones uh, into more variation. Like in general, I like what you've got going on here. We've got a nice tone, uh, but I think it could go a little farther. We could work some deeper shadows. I'd love to see even a little more highlight, a little more of like the yellow creamy reflective highlight pulled out. Maybe a little more sepia tan tone pushed in. Like you've got it nicely, but pushing it back off those highlights into some places like the top of her leg, under her knee here, within the joint of her arm, uh, in between her her uh, her breasts, just like places like that. Here under her chin, probably here on her nose, just pushing sort of the contrast up in that. The thing that really jumps out at me is those little yellow fins. They just aren't doing much. Like you have a transition there, but they're not, it's just a weird, mo like, it's a weird sculpting choice by the original by the sculptor to have these big giant things poking out. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what I would do with those. Those are those are interesting. Um, they just feel a little like they feel a little disjointed from the piece. And I can't place why. To be honest, you could. It might be because we're running almost the colors of non-metallic gold, but you're not really doing non-metallic gold. Like, you're just kind of running, like, a dark brown to yellow. So maybe turning them into, like, real non-metallic gold is the answer, where you've got the full contrast up and they're edged. Maybe that would help sell me a little more. Um, because they just, they feel... Like, I don't know what material they are right now. I don't know what their purpose is. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. So I think doing something like that could really help. But overall, it's you did a really good job with her. The colors look nice. I, I really like your color choices. Your composition's good. Your placement's really good. The application's clean. Yeah, looks cool. All right. There we go. Okay. All right, Alex Weir. Uh, wondering if you get some feedback on the captain. A bit red in the face, uh, but he was originally visiting on, on ice. Any tips for highlighting red armor? Uh, sure. All right. Yeah, I would pull some of that red back out of his face. I mean, if you know he was a bit red in the face, you've got the right answer. Like, you already knew that, so you didn't need me to tell you. When your brain tells you something like that, listen. Your brain is correct, okay? Uh, now, as for, like, edging red, it's tough. Um, one of the things I like to do is just edge it in a nice bone color, like pick a nice yellow, like a quite yellow-white. I will do all the edging in that, and then I will go back around and glaze all of those edges with uh, red. Something like Blood Letter works fine, or Red Ink from Vallejo, or whatever. Um, you may also just want to look at like a really ultra bright, intense red. So like Chimera Colors, The Red, or um, Nocturna Miniatures makes a bunch of red. Like They make like, um, what's the name of it? fiery flame or something like that that's like really intense orange red you could look at like if it's if it's got the pigmentation you can get there you could also try something like um i've used this several times which is cadmium red light from golden it's a heavy body acrylic this is like pigment rich as all get out you need flow aid to get it working and running enough but um but this will pop the heck out of red edge highlights in one step. Uh, that's This is a great color. It's, so like I said, it's CP Cadmium Red Light, Rouge de Cadmium Claire, Rojo Cadmio Claro. Yeah, sure. Anyway, that's a good one you can try. Uh, so all those are the options. That would be basically what I, what I, my advice. Only other thing that jumps out at me from this is, again, we've got a problem with our, our base and our background. I like your, your corner of the building. Dig that. Looks nice. Uh, more colors, more tonal variation. We're just too blue. I need some pits, some scratches, some streaks, some runs, some something there. I need browns, I need greens, I need I need color. I need life! So yeah, you get the idea. Overall, very good though. I like them. This is great. By the way, the pattern on that cloak looks fantastic. Very, very well done. Like the servo skull and all that stuff came out really wonderfully. And I do like all your contrast and your deep colors on the red. I think the contrast you're running on the red looks really nice. All right, Maroc, 
Uh, looking for some feedback on the OSL, how it works on the metals, and some advice on how to improve the infect would be most appreciated. All right. Well, part of the challenge here in Morocco is we've got so much of it, right? You've got a steel dude, and there's a lot of green going around here. Um, you know, looking through it, part of the problem is we've got a couple different, like, it's, it's hard for me to necessarily identify the directionality of the light. Uh, I understand it's coming from below. Like, you've told me that through some places, but in some places it's not as strongly identified. So let me see if I can unpack what I mean here. Let's take this arm just an example, because this will be a good way to go. So he's holding his arm down, and it's not really against the, the light. Like, it's kind of shielded from the light if it's coming from this direction, right? Now it would bounce around and bounce off him some. But the, the, the challenge here is we don't have any shadow opposing the OSL. So, like, I feel like you're casting some good light, uh, especially on the metals. It just needs the shadow to help bounce against it. So, like, if the green is going to hit this side mainly then darken this side of the arm or something like put me a complementary shadow right if if the green is here hitting this part of the metal and making it bright then make the top of the shadow make this the dominant light source because your your lighting is very extreme it's told me that that's what's going on right so i need shadows to counteract like you've inverted the the light scheme um so i need more top shadows to show that that bottom is where it's lit from. In the same way, he's very evenly lit up this side of him on the flesh. So I like your metals more than I like the flesh because he's just green all the way up evenly, right? And it it wouldn't be that way. Like this would be very intense and have lots of these yellow reflections like you've caught here on the knuckles and stuff. You would see that here. And then this part would be mostly gray with like just some green worked in. And you want to avoid, like, there's kind of a harshest line here. You want to avoid that. This glow should be weaker than this. As we travel farther from a motivated light source, it should generally get weaker. And here it's too similar. So I think that would be my main feedback for you. But overall, he's, I mean, insane, as always. You're a madman. All right. Paso, uh, second submission ever. Uh, so he's looking at, yeah, this this shaman from Blood Rage. Oh, I'm very familiar with him. And yet again, OSL. Um, so let's take a look. All right, so first off, on the flamey sword, way too much like white. I know that in the picture, let's look at the picture. Like this seems like there's a lot of white, but it's not. Like that's actually quite a lot of yellow white. And plus the artist has the luxury of taking up all this space out here with orange. We don't have that, right? Like there's no, I can't paint the air around this thing. So you've got to shrink that down. Um, it would also help you want to like you, picking out these lines and stuff and making them do something like have darker colors and things like that will sell the effect. So the, the motivating source here is a challenge because it doesn't, it doesn't feel like fire. It's too much, way, way, way too much white. Um, if you want to get that hot source, make the runes white then edge them in that yellow or put a little dark line beside them and then have this go yellow, orange, and orange and up to red, black, right? And make sure you smooth stuff like that out because that's a hard transition there. Now, as far as the actual glow on him goes, um, yeah, that I think is pretty good. I, I'm just curious as to why this is red and these aren't. Like, you jumped colors here. Hold on, let me go back to this one. This is what I'm saying. Like, I don't get what this coloration is doing here um i like all the light on the skin i think that actually looks rather nice i think you captured that well i think it fades well the shadow on the backside is is nice and strong that's good um i would cast even this part side here like in a little more shadow so i think overall that's good i just don't know why this is pink i'm not sure if you're trying to reflect red flame here but that's not actually what would be happening. Like, this is all just a light source, and it should all be like this. So the gold thing, like, looking at him, are you mimicking something in the picture? No, because, like, here again, you can see it's just this is lit, right, and sort of this is not. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I think it's good. Got nice blue sort of weak lighting on this side. This looks real orange. Yeah, I think I think your, your flesh work is really, really strong. 
I think he did a very admirable job of capturing that there. Um, I would have a little bit of weaker light coming out to here and here on the edge of his face. You got a little bit there, I guess, on his face. A little bit more out to here, like capturing on some teeth here on this side, glinting off of this metal, just that kind of stuff. You want to pop those out just a little bit. Like have a little bit more of that light traveling, that just very weak reflection. OSL is really, really, really hard because it is the most complicated thing you can paint. Lots of paint people, when they start painting, they're like, oh, I'm just going to do some OSL. It's really hard. You're trying to recreate one of the most complicated effects you can because we all understand subconsciously how light works and can easily spot it when it's wrong. Like your brain just has a subconscious bias to it and will notice when things are off. So there you go. But overall, yeah, cool. I think you did a great job, especially on that like that right side of him. You captured that reflection really, really, really well. All right, Jamie Lannister. I, I read through this earlier, so but he's got a lot of questions, and, and I understand why the that's like that. So why we have the big base. Okay. All right. So let's see if I can get some closer shots here. Why are my arrows not working? Apparently I cannot scroll through your post. So we're gonna have to do this the annoying way. Okay, so you have the black and white photo, but this is a good example, right? Like, notice his skin is all the same color without contrast, um, stuff like that. Like, the pants, all the same. All this is just gray. So, you know, you want to watch stuff like that, right? Like, you've got the photo there. Okay, so let's just look at him. When we're doing stuff like dirt lines, uh, I know some of that's work in progress. You want that to be a smoother transition. As far as textures go... Um, I need, like, I would, you need more actual texture. Like, right now, we're just, it's not, I'm not capturing any of that texture. One of the other problems you have is that your finish is still very satin, even going into glossy at some points. Oh, now all of a sudden I get arrows. Okay, fine. And you want to make sure that gets nice and flattened out. Like, here I can see these light reflections. This is, if, if he's got that heavy texture you want, then it's not satin. It's wool. Like, you know, it, it's sort of like Jamie, at least from my reference in the show, he's often dirty when he's wounded there. You know, everything in that world is just dirty, muddy, awful. And only, like, Daenerys gets to walk around uh, unsullied. Uh, get it? Okay. Anyway, everybody else from, from Westeros just looks like they rolled around in the mud for five days. Um, and they haven't seen a bath ever. So the, like, my point being is that if you're, if you're going to work with those kind of textures, you want to look into things like hashing and scratching and what is the texture of wool versus the texture of leather and really capturing that stuff in there. And then you want to make sure it's very, very matte because all of those things would not be highly reflective, especially when they've been out and in the elements for a long period of time. And you're, you're sort of what you're trying to sell me here with this big piece is that he's alone in the wilderness. No problem. Um, you can do that on a smaller base. I like. I would highly and strongly recommend you to stay away from bases of this size. Um, one of the ways you can sell it is a background. A background, you know, painting a background is a good way to go. Um, but just having the ground be kind of flat around him, you could shrink this by about fifty percent and still communicate the same thing. Okay, um, and still communicate sort of the emptiness to it. Um, but nonetheless, I, I get what you're going for. And if he is out here and in the wilderness like that, then he's going to be quite dirty. So, you know, when you have like, like the watermark on the cloak where mud has come up, it needs to be like repeatedly soaked in because his cloak has fallen in water and then dried and fallen and dried. And so you want to work in like these thin glazes of color that have slowly come down and soaked up. And so the bottom is almost, you know, black brown and it gets lighter as it travels up the cloak because less and less of it has seeped in over time. So that's what I would say. But uh, overall, like, I love that you're doing the diorama piece. I love that you're telling a story. It's uh, it's great stuff. I think it does communicate that. So I think your color choices are nice because you went all muted. You didn't go anything super bright. I support that fully. Excellent choice there. He doesn't feel like he's, you know, highborn, like he's Jamie in the gold armor or whatever, right? He's, he's you know, dirty and alone in the wilderness. And I think you captured that well. So, all right. Well done, Greg. 
All right. So, Hive Tyrant. First submission here. Spent a lot of time on this one. This is also first time using a light box. Not sure I got it right. Hoping this will help you take your painting to the next level. Well, I hope so too, man. And I'm glad you posted. So, let's go cycle through the pictures here. Okay. So, my biggest advice for you is going to come out in this picture. This will sum up most of everything I have to say. As far as color goes, I've got no issue with any of that. I understand you're probably painting to a specific hive scheme. And I think the colors work fine. So I think that's all good. Work looks clean. Um, so good. Uh, which is really a, which is a, a, a strong testament on models like this. Because they got a bunch of different nonsense going on. And these like, those, those wings with those bones in the middle are really annoying to paint. So um, well done. Now, it's all variation. Okay? That's the answer. It's all tonal and and texture and, and sort of texture variation. So the wings are too flat. What I mean by that is they're all just sort of this cream color. We have very little variation. You got a tiny amount down here near the edge, and that's about it. I need to see a lot more in there. Big leathery bat wings. Okay. I hope this doesn't return any inappropriate search. Okay. So like, yeah, this will be good. And once again, you can't see it because it's under my stupid head. Okay. So you can see how there's all this variation in the wing. See this texture and this scratching? I really hate that Google moved the image to the side. Why? Why, Google? Why do you just change things? It's like they hire people who just have no other job but to change things. Things that were perfectly fine. Okay. So you can see how these have all this texture and this variation from like dark up to very light. That's the kind of stuff you want to try to capture in there, right? Um, so here, right, is another good example where you can see the, like, veins and stuff through it. So you can you can vary by light. You can vary by uh, texture, any of those kinds of things. But, like, I need more. Where the wing is stretched and thin here in the middle, it should generally be lighter, getting darker toward the part where the skin is more condensed. On the hive carapace... Things like hashed texture, where you're just taking a very sharp, thin brush and going in successively lighter grays here toward the edge will add a lot of life to, like, to, to Tyranid Carapace. Um, so I think it's just, you know, continuing to work as to bringing up your tonal variation. Finally, in the red, you've got some good variation in there. You could push that farther, especially with some brighter highlights, I think would be the way to go. Um, you can see my previous comments about, you know, highlighting red where you can uh, you can use a very vibrant red or something like that. Or you could paint a little ivory and then just glaze it back down with the actual red color. Something like that. But overall, I think this is really good work. I like all the colors you're using. I think it's just a matter of, of increasing that tonal variation and you're good to go. All right. All right. So let's keep going. <clears throat> Damien. Uh, with some blood for the blood god, finished up his slaughter priest, uh, used some of the gray skin painting tutorial, uh, feedback on the color scheme and some tips regarding painting rivers of blood on bases. Sure. Okay. So uh, the, with the skin, I mean, the main element there is we need some more tonal variation. If you, if you look in the tutorial, you'll see how I talk about creating different shadows and stuff using purples and darker grays and things like that to create different colors in there. So I think that's mainly where your challenge lies because the skin is a little flat. Um, now, as to the color scheme, I mean, it's fine. I think it, it works just fine. There's not much on him, to be honest. So if the skin works, then he basically works. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you don't have anything clashing or anything like that. So I think for the most part, you're good. With the bones, uh, again, go watch the video that's linked because I talk about bone transition in there some. And like the bone needs more tonal variation. Uh, same with the metals, I would say. So again, also in the linked video. Uh, now as to rivers of blood, um, yeah, I mean, in general, there's lots of ways to go about it in general. If you're going to do like, you want to have something that's really earth and then you want to do either a resin pour and use blood for the blood God over top. Um, that's a good way to do it or use some, uh, Liquitex gloss gel medium, um, just gloss gel uh, to then like create actual river, you know, sort of waves and stuff in there, something like that. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it, but you need more to it. Like it doesn't look like he's standing in river blood right now. It kind of looks like he's standing in just red. Um, 
So you want to make sure that you've got a distinction in elements there. Like put down some texture, some piece of cork, and then build around it with some grit and sand and stuff so it doesn't just look like a piece of cork. Never just use cork. It always needs to be just you're using cork to build mass and then you're building on top of it. And then put the blood around it. Um, I like using a deep crimson resin pour, which will be transparent and quite light color. And then you take some blood for the blood god and you just lay down a layer over the top of that. And that's a good way to do a river of blood. So um, it's what I did for my Dark Oath War Queen. So uh, yeah, that would be my advice. Overall, though, very cool. I like him with gray skin. I think it looks really nice. So I think you got a great idea there. Okay. So, Sergey, uh, Echo from the Mystic uh, Battles Pantheon uh, do, wanted to do some translucent cloth, uh, and uh, he wanted to paint white tattoos, uh, but not sure how to do tattoos that are light in the skin. Well, it's very, very hard is the answer. Okay, so the answer on the skin is tonal variation. I spent some time looking at this one earlier because it was a fascinating piece to match the art. You've got good reflections in the light here, but her skin doesn't vary enough. Let's go to the source artwork, okay? So notice how the artist has lit her from from basically over her left shoulder, right? The light is back here somewhere behind her. And what's happened then is the artist has created this really strong light line here on the edge of her and on her face, right? And here. But look at how dark he's taken some of these elements here, right? These like dark purple blue tones that are in here in the shadows, okay? down here you can really see where he's playing with the light here i mean like if you look at her feet this is an amazingly strong shadow right so that's number one we need to we need to increase that similar variation on the skin right like we're getting the shadow that this light you have overhead of her is casting but look at her foot here and her foot here compared to this okay that's where you see the strong difference in light all right now as to like, the, the translucent cloth works well enough. No issues there. Um, you could you could do some some more soft glazing just to get it even. Now, as to the white tattoos, again, because he put so much of her in shadow, like, look at how little of her is actually lit in normal skin tones. This is all very, very blue, right? This is very blue-purple skin. So he's actually made the skin extremely dark, and that's how he's using these light tattoos, because he made the skin completely in shadowed. Imagine, like, in your mind, turn her around so we're looking at her from her left side, where this is the amount of light, and think about how much these tattoos are showing. The answer is almost not at all. You can tell, because look where the light line here meets the tattoo. It disappears. Right? So the artist has tricked you. Because you saw this and you said normal skin, and then you painted normal skin, but it's not. It's not at all, right? It's very, very dark blue-purple skin that's it, incredibly unshadowed, right? And then he came in, and against the dark of that skin, he used— and this isn't actually white, it's a very pale flesh color— um, but he's used a very pale Caucasian skin tone to create these tattoos, so the answer is if you wanted to do them, you'd have to darken the skin considerably. Otherwise, it's just not going to look uh, like it fits much. Lighter color tattoos in general are tough unless the skin tone itself is very dark. Um, and even then, it's still challenging. But you could try here. You would want to use a very pale flesh tone. And then you would want to glaze your mid-tone flesh tone back over it. So... That's my best answer I can give you if you don't want to go in and, like, really, really redo a lot of the shadows and set her in a very cold tone. Okay. Juan Francisco Gonzalez Hidalgo, greatest name in the PMP, bringing us his first three all-contrast Marines. Uh, yeah, I've been following these and seeing these on, uh, on you know, the, the socials, as it were. And uh, I think these are looking great, man. Uh, for, for all contrast work and then with the highlights and stuff, I think these look absolutely fantabulous. It's a great example of what contrast can achieve. Um, my biggest advice for you is be careful on some of your edges. Like the thing that leaps out to me the most is stuff like here on the shoulder lines where that's kind of rough, right? So going back in with the original contrast color and neatening those lines, like this one's pretty good. These two look a little more rough, I think is what I would recommend 
Uh, but overall, I mean, you know, for what you're aiming at here, I think you were very successful. Uh, I think the the white scar guy here, if that's what that dude is, I think that's what this guy is supposed to be. Is that right? I don't know. I think he could probably have a little more shadow, so maybe a little of the, like, uh, what is it? Um, like, that Space Wolf Gray is a really weak blue-black shadow. You could very lightly, like, maybe mix that and some contrast medium, like, 50-50, and just kind of glaze a little more of that around here on, like, the shoulders and stuff like that. Could be a way to pick some of that out. But overall, I, I think these guys came out wonderfully. Uh, their eyepieces look really good. The armor plates have really nice transitions. It's great. This is a perfect example of what you can accomplish with contrast paints. They look wonderful. Proud members of their legions all. And you've, you frankly, you can stop. You've already painted the best one. Your Imperial Fist is done, so I don't really know what the need is to go any farther. I mean, you've already got the best one done, so there you go. All right. Next up, Philip Ingle. Uh, looking for more improvement on skin tones that look alive. Well, the answer, my friend, is tonal variation. That's right. It's, I'll, if you took a drink every time I said that in a video, you would be dead of alcohol poisoning by the time we got to the end. Um, but nonetheless, it is the answer. Um, you know, and that's sort of true around everything here. Like the steel, the red, the copper, like we need more variation in the tones. But to like, I'll give you, we'll, we'll draw it out in, in, I'll try to be very specific here with what I'm saying in like his face. So like, you need two things. When I say tonal variation, I don't just mean in contrast in, in brightness, although that's part of it. You know, having like the top sides of his, his like, I don't have a, I don't have a snout, but the top sides of his snout here popped out uh, and here in his ears and then darker contrasts here, you know, working in uh, a deeper color like an African shadow or a black leather or something like that, like a purplish tone into the deeper colors of the skin and then working some reds in between to transition be uh, between the two. In general, human beings recognize red in skin as life. It's blood. It's just what we recognize. Like there is a built-in subconscious thing to that. That's why vampires, even though they're like full of blood because <laughs> they drink blood, are always drawn and painted as being extremely like pale because they're death. Right, they're the they're, they don't have life in them, um, and so to to represent that artist classically turn them into this pale, gray, white, purple that's devoid of the red that we see as life. Right, um, so working those kind of tones in is how you'll you'll step up the 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 sort of living feel of them. But overall, I mean, this is a good. And by the way, kudos for painting a doom flare. Like my goodness. Uh, this is not an oft seen model, so I'm, I'm digging it. Um, but you know, it's, it's well painted. Your little touches of OSL and stuff are good. I like all those. Um, the colors and paints are all cleanly applied. So you, you've got a nice, you've got some nice work here. I think your, your next step is just to increase that, that contrast in several different ways. All right. Devin, uh, Lord of Plagues. Uh, all right. So... He said the photos are struggling to capture the contrast. Um, yeah, I mean, well, first of all, it sounds like you've got too much, like I read your description here. It sounds like um, you're, you've got too much direct light on them. Like you don't want that much direct light. Like you're blowing it out and you'll need to adjust your camera brightness down um, because it, you're, you're over flooding the aperture with light. Um, but that being said, I think that although in reality those colors might be there, they're not there enough. Like, this does need to run down into a deeper... And we'll we'll go to the one, yeah, like on the painting desk here. Like, this is your painting desk, and even though it's in direct light, like, yeah, that just needs to be darker. Like, we want to run more contrast. My advice to you is go look at people like David Soper. And, uh, and, and in fact, here, we'll just do it together, shall we? David Soper Nurgle. All right. <clears throat> okay. Nope, once again can't see it Stupid. all right i need to find a better way to do this okay so this is in this uh you know this is like this green nope let's go to the closer up one this is in sort of a green yellow hue but notice that there's actual black that shows here like he's got this navy blue it's actually like a navy blue color he's using but notice how dark he takes that down right like look at how deep these shadows are especially near the lower parts of him right up to that 
that's the level of contrast. Like that's where you want to run if you're if you're trying to get up to that that full fledged contrast there. Okay. So that's what I would say. Um, whereas here, yes, you're making that transition, but it's not it's not going as far as it could. The other thing I would say is you can pop it out by with these pits and stuff in the armor. Make sure you do something with these. Don't just let them be darker. Put like you have this weathering and stuff, but you've you've managed to not weather all the parts that I would expect to be weathered on the axe. What I mean by that is like these pits are rust holes where where weathering has pitted away the metal. These should be the homes of orange rust, right? Out here is still metal. So like you need to invert on the axe. This should be the part that's brown, black metal, maybe tiny bits of orange. These should be brown and orange, really heavily pitted and stuff like that. And, you know, you can use the orange on the lower parts to kind of cheat and make that your edge highlight almost there. Um, so, yeah, just when you think about when you think about how this armor is weathering, these are pits that are happening because of weather and, and wear and tear and rust. So, like, you want to turn these brown, have some streaking coming out of them, stuff like that. So I hope that helps, Devin. But overall, I mean, it's it's good. You've got the right colors down. I like your transition. We just need to, again, go farther. Things like your horns here are really well executed on. Running this transition is really nice. Classic Nurgle, light to dark. Looks good. That I really dig. Okay. Alan Thomas. Uh, basically, what he's looking at is, is feedback on texture. I won't read it all out. Um, but let's let's talk about feather texture. Okay. So all in all, Alan, I think it's good. I mean, you know, you were kind of wondering whether or not it sells. And my answer is, yeah, I think it sells just fine. Um, I think you could, you know, like if you want to do some different things, you could work in little colored stripes and stuff in there where he's treated the feathers because clearly he's built this. You already have like the white stripes. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, but you could, uh, you know, you could, you could have some other colors in there. Like you could work a subtle blue in there. Cause you got some touches of blues and stuff in this. So you could actually have like some blue stripes worked in where he's, you know, he's painted or treated the feathers. They're not, he's not a real bird. So, you know, he made this little costume for himself. Uh, he can, he can put colors on it if he wants to. Uh, cause you've got these blues here. It could be a nice way to bring it out. And that would also help vary it up. But I think your slashes and your hashes are good. Um, yeah. I mean, I think overall it sells. It's actually, not at all what I would what I would say is the challenge. Um, you know, with the feathers, you got a nice strong central line. Somebody told me what the name of that is once, and I don't remember, but there we go. You get this good, whatever this little center bone thing is, or cartilage piece, I should say. Um, your hashes are nice and varied. You've got lots of different visible texture in them. I think that works. Now, as to the leather itself, one of the ways you could distinguish that is more random stippling and scratching. You've got some good scratches and stuff in there. You could go farther with some actual stippling effort. And like kind of da, 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 jamming it around to really vary that out. You could also work in subtle brown tones. Not like, don't think like, oh, I'm going to get out this color brown and I'm going to go nuts. That's not what I'm saying, right? I'm talking about like, you're going to get out a black brown. You're going to very softly glaze in some of those deeper browns, like a rhinoxide type thing or something, right? Where you're just subtly working that color in. Um, That can be a, a, a good way to just kind of like if the wings have a slight blue tone and the leather has a slight brown tone, even if that's extremely minimal, it will still read. Uh, but overall, I think this guy looks fantastic. Um, I would say you've got, you know, tonal variation on the skin as usual is a very, not as usual. I just mean, that's a very common piece of feedback I give, uh, you know, just some more, some more highlight and transition on the skin, I think would be good. But overall, I like his skin tone. I just need to see a little more color and, and variation in there. But yeah, looks good. Okay, Jim Phillips. About the 30th mini that he started and the closest to finishing. Hey, you should well, start finishing them. Take them all to being done. Uh, there's a few bits left like the back and the handle of the axe to do. Do you have any videos on painting chains and chain mail? Uh, I do not. Uh, but I I mean, it's... it's I'll, I'll mark it down for a video. The short answer is it's not that much different from metal. You treat it as one big volume and just make sure everything's you know sort of edged. And then he says, like, should black lining, should he be black lining everything to tidy it up? Yes, probably. Because um, you want nice dark areas to, to separate all these things, right? Like, all these things need to be separated and well-defined. I think your skin tone variation here is really nice. This is, like, I see lots of reds and purples and highlights. So I think that's looking really good. 
The metals are looking good. Yeah, I mean, I think just really separating the elements and making sure we've got nice crisp highlights on them uh, is is where you want to go next, uh, to be completely honest. But yeah, like you can see it around. You want to make sure like the mouth. A lot of this isn't necessarily all just black lighting. It's adding the, the deepest shadows, right? So you don't necessarily have to trace a black line. You could take like just a dark blue black and push it up against here, right? And then that's how I often achieve my contrast between elements is I just, I manually push a shadow into the area that separates everything, right? And then sometimes I'll come back in where, where you don't have enough room to do that and we'll just black line like around this thing or the hand of the ax or something. And you also don't want to truly use black in most cases. That's, it's too strong. You want to use like a brown black or a blue black or something like that. You know, something that's a little softer, but good stuff. Great work on the skin. Okay, Jared. Uh, happy with the current point in this model, but it'll come back to it when the rest of the warband is done. Can you list a few points you see to adjust or tidy up? Okay, sure. Um, sure. Well, this is the only picture we have, so <laughs> so I'll, I'll stick just to this. Um, the gold needs some work. It's uh, pretty flat still. Um, like that is to say, especially in things like separating between all these elements of the fan should have a dark line in it. All these recessed things should have a dark line in it, right? Like, so get yourself some dark brown or black ink and give me some nice separation points in there. Something like what you did with the gold bird down here. Same thing kind of with all the elements. Um, like they need a little bit more. They, it, it feels kind of smoothly airbrushed right now, right? And like, I can still see the speckling from it. So, like, some actual just glazes to tidy up over and then, like, actually really strongly separating the various elements of the fold. You got it nice up here. For whatever reason, this, this one's stuck really nice, so I like that. Um, but, like, having a little bit more separation there and kind of around these things, kind of what we were discussing last time, I think would be good. My actual tidy up step for you would be mainly in the tufts of hair around our Cypher Lord here. That is to say... Um, the do more work picking out individual lines like follow these hairs and give me some more individual texture in this because right now it's just kind of a purpley pink mass and there's not really much uh to to separate it there so like actually give me go in with a lighter color and draw me some thin lines uh to, to and and you know same or a dark color and then you know really draw down the, the dark separations but some thin hashes you know, following the actual texture of the thing there, I think is what you want to do. Okay. All right. But overall, cool. I like the color scheme. It's very zinchy. It works. All right. David Vesterberg worked a lot on increasing contrast to this mini. Uh, we're looking at, the, so basically saying the red isn't showing in the picture, which is a problem of, of photos in general. But it also means that there's just not enough contrast. If only under the bright light does it show the contrast, you need more contrast. I mean, it's that that simple answer. Like, hold it. It shouldn't just show under one type of light. So, like, if, it, if you have to get it directly under your painting light to really see it, then you need to go farther. Because you should be able to walk around your house and just hold it under any random light you have, and it should still show, more or less. Right? And my guess is, and, and here's the test. Do what I did earlier. Take a picture of this and turn it to black and white. And my guess is it's going to look mostly gray. Okay. So you, I can see where you're pushing. Keep pushing. Like you need to work some dark browns or purples or brown blacks into there. Uh, you know, into the into the shadows here. Let's actually go into the photo. Um, you know, up in here and in here and under this knee, you know, on the sides of his head. Those kinds of things are what you want to what you want to push. And then with the highlights, go in with either, and as I, you know, kind of the same thing I said earlier, e with the edging, the edge highlight question. Either, um, uh, either, you know, go with some ivory and then red glaze over the top so you get an ultra, ultra intense red. Or, uh, you can use like something that is red, orange, and really, really, really strong and just do a couple layers of it to really build that up. But the real key with red is all the red game is all in the shadows, right? It's all in making the those soft, shuttle, subtle, deep shadows. So that's where your contrast needs to live here. You need to push more into the low tones, and that part, by the way, isn't going to get washed out on camera. 
the the red to orange and stuff, cameras will wash that out. It is just what happens some. Um, okay, so like some of this probably does show is more orange and more bright in reality. I have no doubt. I don't think you're lying to me because I've had that happen a hundred times in photos. Just it's the nature of like how digital things, how digital cameras capture that red orange part of the spectrum. It washes it out. But you need to push the darker contrast. That will make the brighter part pop. Because you can't rely on just the red to red orange. Again, turn the thing black and white. It'll look mostly gray. Okay. So there you go. Hope that helps, David. All right. Finally, Tebow working on his piece for an upcoming painting comp. First try to diorama. Uh, mainly looking for compositional feedback. Okay. A uh, couple quick painting notes on just stuff that grabs me that'll just easy touch up stuff. Um, some more darker shades on this side of the the uh, the miniature because this is casting a light, which you've nicely captured here everywhere, but then this is still the same brightness. So this shouldn't be glowing this much if this isn't darker. There's too much ambient light. Um, yeah, I think that's probably... Make sure the base connection to the actual diorama you've built is nice and solid. Like, I can see a crack line there. So just make sure that's smooth over the top. Uh... Other than that, composition-wise, I think it's I think it's fine. Um, this is satiny, so be careful of that. Um, the uh, I would say some of the smoke should get darker black, but I think that overall it's good. I'm not sure that I'm drawn to him, and that's the challenge. Because this is really bright, and it's kind of drawing my attention away. And there's not enough over on this side of the diorama to draw me. So, like, if we split it, you know, down the middle, most of the weight is over on this side as far as light and sort of the elements of the piece. Um, so, like, some more mushrooms that are bright red, yellow over here could help. Um, maybe doing something up by him. Like, I'm trying to think of what would kick it up. Maybe really popping this bottle out to be very bright yellow would help. Maybe popping his little bug friend out. Some bright dots on his cap might help. Uh, you know, just stuff like that I'm thinking of that'll like that'll help us really focus our attention here. I think weight on this side is, is your biggest challenge. If there were like two squigs over here, it would feel more balanced. Right? That's part of the challenge right now. Is that it's it, the piece is really, really weighted this way. Um, all your light and visual interest is happening over here, too. So, yeah, I think that's just part of one of the challenges. I almost wonder if this wasn't rotated around some. Like, if the whole piece, if this guy wasn't slid around maybe like 10 degrees that way, and this guy was pointed more and like that, so the piece was more, like, rotated around, like actually the pieces, if that wouldn't help balance it some. So that, but I don't know, just some thoughts. Overall, I think it's a really, really cool piece. I like your lighting. I like the OSL. I think that all sells. I think all of the transitions on everything look good. I like his, his like, night blue robes. I think those look really well. I think the shading and, and work on his, like, chin and nose piece look really good. The bottle looks good. All that looks great. So I think that's probably your, your biggest challenge. I hope a couple of those things help. But good stuff, Tebow, and you got to tell us how you did. But all right, that brings us to the end. So, as always, uh, I hope this was all helpful. If, uh, like I said, if you want to join us on your hobby journey, feel free to click the link below. And, uh, and, and uh, you have to answer the questions. Quick note, there will be three questions. If you click to join, you must answer all of them. If you do not, you don't get in. That's how it works. I don't care how real of a human being you look like. You either answer all three questions or you don't get the accept. That is a hard and fast rule. If you answer two of the questions, you don't get in. If you answer one, you don't get in. Three questions, three answers. It's the minimalist bar to clear, but you got to clear it. So at any rate, thank you all to everybody who submitted truly awesome work this, this month. This is great. I, I love doing this every month. It's so amazing. So thank you all for submitting. I hope to see more submissions next month. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching. I appreciate everybody who's in here. Um, I do this once a month, but the heroes of this community are all the people who are sharing feedback, answering on posts, being positive, 
This community is all about positivity, about constructive criticism, and helping people take their next step. So if you see as you're going through your day the chance to respond to a question, to give somebody a shout out, to drop a like, something like that, you can do some great work and make somebody's day better with such a minimal effort. So let's all join together, share in this wonderful hobby we all have, and continue spreading the, the positive hobby vibes and taking our next step together. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.